Hello, welcome to this video where we look at two planes and how they can uh, interact with each other. There's only two options. Option number one, the planes are parallel. What makes this so special? How will you know? Well, parallel planes have normal vectors that are scalar multiples of each other. You see, the normal vector to the gray plane and the normal vector to the blue plane they, one guy is a constant multiple of the other guy, if they're going to be parallel, the two planes. The other option, the two planes can intersect, and when they intersect, it'll be uh, in a line. And the question could be, find the equation of the line. Um, something nice happens, actually, when you have the normal vector to the blue plane, and the normal vector to the um, transparent plane. Imagine what happens if you were to cross them in any order. Um, I'm just I was trying to get the visual to be that you. I want you to see that when you do that, you get the direction of the uh, of the line of intersection. I don't think it really is uh, very obvious <laughs> in that um, looking at that picture, but it is the case though. All right. Let's look at an example now where I give you two planes that intersect and I'm asking you for the line of intersection. How do I know these two planes intersect? How do I know these planes are not parallel? Let's look at the normal vectors. The first plane has a normal vector of 1, negative 2, 1. Just looking at the equation of the plane, you know the normal vector. It's the coefficients on x, y, and z. So, the second plane's normal vector is 2, 3, negative 2. There's no way to get from the first normal vector to the second normal vector by multiplying by a constant. So, no. All right, so here's the algebra that you go through to find the line of intersection between the two planes. Uh, first up, we need to eliminate one of the variables. Okay. What's easiest to eliminate? doesn't really matter. Let's eliminate the, the x. Double every... Oh wait, this is actually going to eliminate, eliminate the z, sorry. We're going to eliminate the z. If we double the first equation, our z's are going to cancel out. We'll have 2x minus 4y plus the 2z plus the 20 equals 0. Add that to the bottom equation. Y's can, uh, z's cancel out. X is double up. You get 4x minus y plus 24. It's supposed to be equal to zero. All right. Now, pick one of these two variables. Doesn't matter which one. Um, pick one of them to to be the variable uh, t. Okay. And then you'll solve for the other in terms of t. Now, I'm going to choose x to be equal to t. There's nothing wrong with letting y be equal to t. You'll bring in a fraction, though. Um, and if you can, you want to try to avoid the fraction. By letting x equal to t, we then can write y in terms of t. Just replace the x with the t. Solve for y. And you get the fact that y is equal to 4t plus 24. We know that x is t. We know that y is 4t plus 24. We just need z. Go back to one of the original equations, plug in x being equal to t, plug in y being equal to 4t plus 24, and get what z is. t minus 8t minus 48 plus a z plus a 10. Put the 48 and the negative 48 and the 10 together, you get a negative 38. Shift that to the other side as a 38. z equals 7t, when you ship it to the other side, plus the 38. It's a line of intersection. Remember the equation of lines. You have your point and your direction vector. And so, but we don't have to, you know, we didn't, we didn't go and find out what, the, what a point is that was on the line of intersection. Um, we didn't go out and find out what the direction vector is for the line of intersection. We could have, okay? But we have exactly the fact that x is t y is 4t plus 24, and z is 7t plus 38. Writing it in the form that we have, um, 
0 plus t, 24 plus 4 t, 38 plus 7 t, so we can read exactly what a point is that's on that line of intersection and what the direction vector is for that line of intersection. Okay. All right, great. Um, not sure why that mark is there, but anyway, when you have two lines, uh, two planes that intersect in a line like we just had, you could find the angle between the planes. It turns out that the angle between the planes is the same as the angle between the normal vectors. Okay. Yeah, not sure why that double mark is there. Anyway, so uh, we can then use the formula, right, for the cosine of the angle between the two, any two vectors. We want the angle to be the acute angle. And so we're going to force the, the numerator to be positive by slapping absolute value bars around it. Not quite sure why those extra marks are there. <laughs> All right. Uh, go back to the same two planes from last example. We know the normal vectors by reading off the coefficients on x, y, and z. Find the angle between these two vectors. Well, not exactly the angle without a computer. We could at least find the the expression for the angle by saying that theta is the cosine inverse of that right hand side what's the dot product between these two vectors what's the magnitude of each vector let's plug those parts in let's do magnitude first what is the magnitude of n1 1 plus 4 plus 1 rad 6 what is the magnitude of n2 4 plus 9 plus 4 rad 17 what's the dot product 2 minus 6 minus 2 negative 6 so the numerator is an absolute value of that so the numerator is a 6 while the denominator is rad 6 and rad 17 uh, 6 times 17 is 102 so theta technically is the cosine inverse of this fraction if you wanted to know go to a computer and it's almost a radiance. Pi uh, theta equals 54 degrees. Okay, that's the end of this video. In two more videos to go, we look at the distance between a point and a plane and the distance between a point and a line. Those are coming up in the last two videos. My name is Nakai Remmer. Thank you for watching. Taking through this journey here. Um, I ask if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Comment down below. Like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.